Today's integration method is called partial fractions. And partial fractions is really just a little bit of algebra. In fact, it's undoing some algebra you've almost certainly seen before the idea of a lowest common denominator. The idea is this. Suppose I start with an expression like that. One of the things that you can do to this is apply a lowest common denominator, where you do a sort of cross multiplying, and what you get is a single multiplication of terms in the denominator. And then these two linear terms, the x minus 1 and the x plus 2, they should get cross multiplied up at the top. And if you want to, you can then take that and you can expand it out and you can get x plus 5 on the top and a polynomial on the bottom. Now, imagine you had to integrate this. Actually, let me integrate all three of these. Which of these would be easier to integrate? I don't actually know right off the top of my head how to integrate this bottom one here, setting the u to be a denominator and a u sub, the, the du doesn't match the numerator. Maybe I could think of a way to do it, but it would be a bit challenging. However, the top one is something I can do. For example, if I focus on the left-hand side, if I set u equal to x minus 1, then this is just going to be twice the logarithm of the absolute value of x minus 1 after a little u substitution. For x plus 2 is my u, then I'm going to get minus logarithm of x plus 2, and then finally plus c. So the whole point is that this bottom one is hard to do, but the top one is actually straightforward. So then, if I was given an integral that looked like the bottom here, one of these challenging ones, then what I want to do is try to do this process where I undo a lowest common denominator trick, and that's going to turn it into this top form that I do know how to do. So how in general do we undo finding lowest common denominators? Uh, let's actually do it in a harder example to illustrate the point. In this particular example, I've got some quadratic on the top and a cubic on the bottom. Now, because I'm undoing lowest common denominators, I actually don't really care what the numerator is. Maybe I could try to factor it. It looks like it would be a bit messy in this case, but whatever. It's the denominator I want to factor. I notice that it's a cubic and that there's an x in every term. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out an x. And then that quadratic in the denominator, I can factor that out. It's going to give me a 2x minus 1 and an x plus 2, and then also multiplied by the x. Now, this is what I want to focus on. I want to undo a lowest common denominator like this. That is to say, I want to find three other numbers. I want to find this a, b, and c, and I want to write it in this right-hand way such that the thing I began with is the result of taking the lowest common denominator to the right-hand side. So how can I do this? Well, if I was taking the lowest common denominator, what I would do is I would multiply both sides by the denominator. On the left-hand side, taking the denominator and multiplying it just gets rid of it. But on the right-hand side, it's a little bit more complicated. I'm going to step away for a moment here because there's going to be a lot of algebra on the screen. But the basic idea is that for the a over x term, when I multiply by the denominator, the x cancels, and I'm left with a multiplication of 2x minus 1 and x plus 2. For the b term, the 2x minus 1 goes away when I multiply by the denominator. I'm left with an x and an x plus 2. And for the c term, it's x and 2x minus 1. Now I'm going to clean it up a little bit. I've got an a times something, a b times something, and a c times something. I'm going to expand all three of those. So the left-hand side remains the same, becomes a times a quadratic, b times a quadratic, and c times a quadratic. Now, I've been focusing on the a, the b, and the c, but I want to now focus on the x squared, the quadratic terms, the x terms, the so-called linear ones, and the constant terms. That is, I'm just going to rearrange the right-hand side, but I'm going to rearrange it in terms of powers of x. So there's x squared, and then all the things that multiply by the x squared. It looks like a 2a, and a b, and a 2c. Then I'm going to add all the things that multiply out by the x term, the linear term, and then finally I leave whatever constant remains, it looks like a minus 2a. So this isn't any calculus, it's just algebra, it's just reordering, it's expanding everything out, seeing what the values are multiplied by x squared, x, and constants respectively, and then factoring them in terms of the x squared, in terms of the x, and in terms of the constant term. All right, so let me keep my focus on that. All right, once again, there's space for me. Now, if I look at this equation, I see one equation on its face, but in truth, there's three different equations here. And the idea is that this quadratic, the x squared terms, the, the linear, the x terms, and the constant terms, they sort of vary independently. 
Like, for example, if I plug in x equal to zero here, all that would remain is the constant terms. So that would mean that the constant terms all had to be equal. There was an equation for those. And then as I varied the x or I varied the x squared, the coefficients of the x would have to line up, the coefficients of the x squared would have to line up. So I can split this into these three different equations. One equation which is relating the coefficients of x squared, one equation that's relating the coefficients of x, and one equation that's relating the constant terms. And then, in fact, I can actually just get rid of the x and the x squared here to have three different equations. And if I get rid of the original, this is the system of equations I want to solve. There are three equations, and there are three unknown variables, the a, the b, and the c. Now, how do you solve systems of equations like this? Actually, I'm going to teach a course, I believe, in the summer, an online linear algebra course. One of the things it will do is show a systematic way where you can solve systems of linear equations like this. Always plug. You should register for it in the summer. However, for our purpose, I would just encourage you to pause and just sort of ad hoc try to solve it. See whether you can get the A, B, and C from this linear system of equations. Here. I'll do it relatively quickly for you. When I look here, I look at the third equation. This third equation is very simple. It basically just tells me what my a is, so my a is one half. I can then plug the value of one half into the spots where there was going to be the a and the two different equations. If I then look at the top equation, okay, I'm going to put the constants back together. So zero is equal to b plus two c. And this is going to give me a relationship that b is minus two times c. All right, so that was manipulating the top equation. If I now focus in on the second equation here, I have a b and a c, but from the top equation, I have this relationship. But where there's a b here, I can plug in minus 2c, so let me do that. I'll replace my b with a minus 2c. And now the second equation is all in terms of c values, so if I collect the c's and collect the coefficients, I get 1 half is minus 5c, and if I go and divide out, I get my c is minus 1 tenth. So now I know my a and know my c. If I look at the top equation again, remember I had that relationship b is minus twice c. So if c is minus one tenth, then my b is going to be equal to one fifth. And now I have my a, b, c's. So that was my particular sort of ad hoc way of solving the system of linear equations. It's just a bunch of algebra. All right, where are we? We solved the a, b, c's. And I'll remind you that the a, b, c's were the a, b, c's in this form, a over x b over 2x minus 1, and c over x plus 2. I was trying to figure out what the ABCs are. I now know what they are, so I can go and plug them in. And finally, I am trying to integrate something. So what do I want to do? I want to go and replace this with something that I am integrating. I am integrating the 1 half over x. I am integrating the 1 fifth over 2x minus 1, and so on. Each of these is going to be a logarithm, a logarithm with a different u substitution. So what do I get? One half logarithm of x, then I get one tenth, the one fifth, and then there's another one half that comes when I do my u substitution with u equal to 2x minus 1. So one tenth, this logarithm of 2x minus 1 in absolute values, and then minus the one tenth, the logarithm of x plus 2, all plus c. So indeed, I have gone from that original rational function, the polynomial over polynomial, I split it up using this partial fractions algebra. I figured out my coefficients, my ABC. And when I did that, I got something I could integrate. And now I've got in the function after I integrate. Now, the method that we've talked about, it does work generally, but there's a couple different cases. And we've only seen one of them in this video. That is, if I'm looking at a so-called rational function, a quotient of polynomials, a P of X over a Q of X, I'm asking, is that Q of X, the denominator, can I write that as a multiplication of a bunch of non-repeating linear factors? And that's what we had before. We saw it was like an x and then a 2x minus 1 and an x plus 2. It was a bunch of linear factors all multiplied out and none of them repeated. And if that is the case, then the algebra you want to try to do makes it look like a bunch of constants, an a1 over the first linear term plus an a2 over the second linear term and so on. However, we're not done yet because we haven't exhausted all of the cases. So in the next video, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about, well, what if some of those linear terms were repeated? Like instead of a division by x, it was a division by x squared, which is like a linear term twice. Or what if there was a quadratic term, a term like x squared plus 1, one where if you tried to do the quadratic formula, you get imaginary numbers. You couldn't split it up into linear factors very easily. That will be the subject of the next video.